Today I'm showing you the best MW3 settings to boost FPS, improve visibility and reduce input latency. For this video I painstakingly benchmarked and visually compared every single graphic setting in Modern Warfare 3 to help you make your game look virtually indistinguishable from ultra settings and significantly higher performance. Beginning with the display tab, I actually don't want to spend too much time on this, I just want to talk about two settings. The first being the display mode, which I would highly recommend you to leave on full screen exclusive. Now you could play on full screen borderless, it does not actually affect performance in game, however in order to reduce input latency I would recommend the full screen exclusive option. The other settings in the display tab you want to leave on their default values, I use a brightness of 55%. And then finally for NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, you definitely want to have this either on ON or ON plus boost. For most people Modern Warfare 3 is going to be GPU bound, in which case the ON option is the right choice, however on the other hand if you have a very weak CPU, then ON plus boost is the right option for you. Finally make sure that VSync as well as the custom frame rate limiter are all disabled. Moving on to global quality, I would highly recommend anybody to use the render resolution of 100 and dynamic resolution disabled. Now if you're really struggling for performance and you need to gain a few more FPS, then I would highly recommend instead to use upscaling filters such as NVIDIA DLSS, NVIDIA Image Scaling or FSR. In fact I have provided a whole dedicated video on how these individual upscaling filters affect performance in Modern Warfare 2 and since Modern Warfare 3 is essentially on the exactly same engine, I would actually not be surprised if the performance improvements in terms of percentages that I showed for Modern Warfare 2 were also to hold for Modern Warfare 3. On the other hand, if you can spare a few more frames, then I would very highly recommend you to use Fidelity FX Cos at a FX Cos strength of 40% or even higher in order to make your game look absolutely fantastic. From this comparison, you can see that we get significantly improved visibility with Fidelity FX Cos as player models look much sharper, text looks nicer, and just generally the game looks like we disabled some sort of blur filter. What's even better is that on my system I'm only losing 1% performance with this filter enabled. The VRAM scale target by default sits at a value of 90% and as has been the case with Modern Warfare 2, I would highly recommend everybody to reduce this ever so slightly in order to avoid stuttering. Now from my benchmark I really didn't see any stuttering to be honest, however you can see that the 1% lows have significantly decreased with a VRAM scale target above 70. So my recommendation is to set this value to either 70% or if you encounter any stuttering to reduce it to 60%. The variable rate shading is a new option that arrived with Modern Warfare 3 and this one actually packs quite a punch when it comes to improving performance in MW3. In fact I'm seeing almost a 10% improvement in performance on my system and from a simple side by side comparison I bet you wouldn't be able to tell which of the two is actually running with the variable rate shading enabled. In fact I had to meticulously analyze the benchmark section of this game to even find any differences. So if I had to guess what this option does, then I would say that it probably reduces the render resolution of certain objects that are either only shown very briefly, that are moving rather quickly or that are shown on the periphery of your screen. At the same time I always found that the center of the screen or where you're looking at was always at maximum resolution and not affected by this option. So for this reason and because I'm actually seeing a massive improvement in performance with this option enabled, my clear recommendation would be to enable it. Texture resolution has a massive impact on how MW3 looks and its main influence is on VRAM usage. As you can see in the bottom right it increases steadily from 1.7 gigs all the way to 4.3 gigabytes. On the other hand this only reduces performance by roughly 1-2%. As you can see running the game on very low makes it look like hot garbage, so my recommendation at the very least would be to run the game at low, however if you can spare only 1 or 2 FPS I would definitely recommend to run the game on normal. By the way at this early stage there is definitely a bug in the game when it comes to the texture resolution setting. As you can see this palm tree in the background seems to have very high textures no matter the texture resolution that I chose. 
On the other hand, when you are increasing the texture resolution setting from a low value to normal or high, sometimes it can happen that some surface areas are actually still displayed at the low texture resolution until you reload the game. So my recommendation for almost everybody would be to run texture resolution as normal or even high if you for instance have a graphics card with 16GB VRAM or more. Texture anisotropic filtering improves the quality of textures that are viewed at a high angle. While increasing this option definitely improves visibility in Modern Warfare 3, I have to mention that I'm seeing a roughly 4% reduction of the 1% lows on my system with higher settings. Regardless, I personally still like to have texture anisotropic filtering set to normal. The depth of fill adds a blur primarily to your weapon and your operator. Since this blur is usually quite grainy, especially in harsh lighting conditions, I generally prefer to leave this disabled. Moreover, having depth of field might actually introduce some stuttering whenever you ADS because the game actually has to draw this blur filter on top of your screen and therefore my clear recommendation would be to turn this off. Now in Modern Warfare 3 it seems like the developer have integrated the low and far LOD from Modern Warfare 2 into one single option in the detail quality level. From this comparison we can see that especially small objects benefit from this option by increasing their LOD on the higher options. However you should definitely avoid to go beyond the normal LOD as I found the high option to introduce an up to 7% FPS penalty. Particle resolution is another one of those options that I traditionally always had at the lowest value due to its very high performance impact. In Modern Warfare 3 we can see that the very low, low and normal settings all only have a very marginal impact on performance, however the high setting really tanks performance and especially so the 1% lows. Frankly, I think this option is rather counterproductive when it comes to improving visibility due to the higher amount of particles on the higher settings and therefore my clear recommendation would be to set this to very low. Bullet impacts doesn't have a significant impact on performance and the only reason why you would want to have this enabled is that you can actually correct for your spray pattern. So personally I like to have it enabled, however this definitely comes down to personal preference. I did not find any significant impact on performance when enabling persistent effects. Yes, I did restart the game between benchmarks of course and I also wasn't able to show you any side by side comparisons. So because of that my recommendation would be to just leave this disabled. Increasing the shader quality results in a super hefty FPS penalty. I'm losing 20 to up to 40 FPS when I increase this option. So from a performance perspective you absolutely want to run shader on low and also if we compare the visual quality of weapon models on the three different shaders we can see that they look all identical. What shader quality does affect is the amount of shiny objects in game. So for instance in this room you can see how the entire concrete wall becomes one shiny mess, the ceiling becomes super shiny and generally everything looks like it was treated with some shiny coating. Where this of course does make sense is on metallic surfaces that do appear brighter with higher shader quality. Moreover the setting affects the way that water looks, so as you can see it appears again much brighter, much more reflective with higher shader quality level and frankly I think that it's probably easier to see into water with lower shader anyways. On demand texture streaming unsurprisingly does not have an effect on performance and honestly you might leave this enabled if you want to be able to enjoy a prettier game. I also haven't been able to tell much of a difference but of course for the benchmark this might not actually apply. I think this is more important for the warzone map which I guess we'll have to test when this comes out. On the other hand local texture streaming quality did have a slight negative impact on performance but once again I think this is targeted at either the ground war or even the warzone map and therefore this is something that I'll test as soon as warzone comes out. Next we'll have a look at shadow quality and how it affects visual fidelity in game. Frankly I was a little bit surprised that even when increasing this option to high there isn't so much of an improvement in terms of the resolution of shadows and I think the reason for that is that there is an additional setting in the config file that allows you to modify the resolution of shadows independently of the in-game settings. But this will be the topic of my next video so until then my recommendation would just be to stick to a shadow quality of normal because this has almost a negligible FPS impact and at the same time it makes the shadow look slightly better than completely useless.
Screen space shadows traditionally used to look pretty bad on Modern Warfare 2. However, from this comparison, we can see that these shadows are now looking much better and that they are not only drawn on the operator and your weapon, but also under the windowsill and behind these metal bars. Now while I'm seeing a roughly 1% decrease in performance, personally I still like to leave this on low in order to introduce these additional shadows in the world to make some of the objects pop a little bit more in terms of their 3D appearance when compared to having this disabled. For ambient occlusion there is actually quite a nice comparison shot in game and there's also pretty nice explanation of how this option works, however from my testing I really didn't see this happening, I'm not sure if I had to restart my game, but frankly I always recommend to leave ambient occlusion off due to its relatively moderate performance impact and because you really don't want to introduce additional shadows in dark corners where players might be hiding. Screen space reflection you absolutely have to disable in order to avoid turning any reflective weapon models into a complete grainy mess. On the other hand static reflection quality does introduce additional nice lighting to the game and from my benchmark this option didn't introduce a significant FPS penalty. So whether you turn this on or off depends on whether you would like to have some additional shiny surfaces in game or not. Moving on to the final section in the quality tab, I leave tessellation disabled as there is no measurable impact on performance and I also wasn't able to replicate this example on the right hand side even after reloading the game. Terrain memory also had no measurable impact on performance and I also wasn't able to find any example where it is actually improved visual quality of far away textures in game as the description tells us. Volumetric quality you absolutely want to keep disabled as this imposes a hefty 3 to 14% FPS penalty. Also the sort of fog and guard rays that this option introduces are rather distracting and can even reduce visibility. The third physics quality introduces a pretty significant FPS penalty at 3% on the low setting and 5% on the high setting and this actually will make visibility worse in water and therefore I would recommend to leave this disabled. Weather grid volumes primarily affected the 1% lows from my benchmark and this option primarily affects the operators around you and how they look once they got out of the water. This is for sure a nice touch but not more than that. Finally I didn't really see much of a measurable impact on performance when increasing the water quality setting, however since this introduces additional post processing by introducing additional light rays and also kind of making the surfaces that are close to water look wetter or shinier, I actually think that this is sort of counterproductive to a clean game and therefore my recommendation is to turn this off. The final setting that has somewhat of an impact on performance in MW3 is the field of view. However, because of the way that the game no longer renders small objects at a high field of view, this option actually does not as significantly affect performance as you might have thought. While the 60 FOV certainly gives you ever so slightly higher performance, as soon as you go beyond 90 FOV there is virtually no more effect or no more measurable impact on performance in Modern Warfare 3. So my recommendation would be to use whatever works the best for you, I personally prefer to play at a field of view of 110, but if you want to you can definitely crank this up all the way to 120. ADS field of view I recommend to have unaffected in order to avoid the game to zoom in that much whenever you are using a gun that has low magnification. Weapon field of view I prefer to have on white, third person field of view I leave on 90, vehicle field of view on white, disable world and weapon motion blur as well as film grain. And to end this section you probably want to leave both the first and third person camera movement on least and use the option for spectator camera game perspective. If you want to enable the inverted flashbang or not is totally up to your personal preference, I personally leave it disabled. So with that let me briefly walk you through my recommended settings for the lowest input latency, the highest visual quality and the highest overall performance in Modern Warfare 3, the display mode on full screen exclusive, everything else under default values, Nvidia Reflex low latency enabled, Eco mode custom, vsync and custom frame rate limiter disabled as well as HDR on automatic, render resolution 100%, disable dynamic resolution, use the Fidelity FX Cos upscaler at a 40% Fidelity FX Cos strength, VRAM leave on 60 or 70%, 
enable the variable rate shading, use a texture resolution of normal, texture anisotropic filtering on normal, disable depth of field, the detail quality level on normal, don't go higher, particle resolution very low, enable bullet impacts, disable persistent effects, shader quality low, on-demand texture streaming off, and local texture quality on low. Select shadow quality normal, screen space shadow low, and leave the rest under shadow and lighting disabled. Finally, everything in the environment tab I leave on the lowest values. Note that when you change some of these settings, you should definitely reboot your game and you should also make sure that the game reinstalls its shaders. In order to do so, you can click on the display tab, click on shaders restart, click on restart and reload the game. Now before you go, you should know that I have purposely omitted config tweaks and their impact on performance in Modern Warfare 3. The reason being that there are quite a few new options in the configuration file that you're no longer able to modify through the in-game menu and therefore I wanted to dedicate a full video to this topic. Now if this video is already live then I would highly recommend you to check it out right now in order to get additional improvements in performance in Modern Warfare 3. But that's it for today's video guys, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.